Praise the Lord. Dr. Joseph Osafu Edu is a senior lecturer at the Department of Psychology, University of Ghana. He is a practicing clinical psychologist, a leading suicidologist in Ghana, and the principal consultant of SOW Consult. Dr. Osafu is an ardent researcher on suicide and related mental health issues. Joseph Osafo is also the current National Secretary for Ghana Psychological Association. He is an elder of the Church of Pentecost and a motivational speaker who has ministered at various conferences. Dr. Osafo is married to Mavis Osafo Edu with four children. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Osafo Edu. Come on, raise one hand up right now. Can you lift up one hand? Lift one hand up. I love what the president said. If the sons of men have no shame in acting in a particular way and format, we should be crazier than them. And I want in the next one minute begin to make some melodious sounds.
receive a supernatural power this week. Lift up one hand. Lift up one hand. Lift up one hand. And you shall not lift it up. and Sunday something supernatural will touch your life how many of you believe it how many of you believe that we are we we ought to walk in the days higher than our fathers did walk how many of you believe that the power of the spirit of God is ready to be unleashed and that in these last days as Satan works overtime we shall work super overtime Come on, come on, let me see your hand, let me see your hand. How many of you believe that it is possible for divinity to, to release grace upon humanity for an agenda on earth? How many of you believe that God is ready waiting at the gate of his enemies and he's about to shake himself and stir himself one more time on the earth? One more time, tell a friend, one more time. God is about to shake the heavens and shake the earth. And you are the instrument to, to use. Tell a friend, I am the person that God is looking for. Ah. Ephesians 6 is a very interesting scripture. Paul enters into normal daily instructions. Respect your father, obey your parents, do all this. Supposed for living. Suddenly, he breaks in there and releases a bullet. Finally, all the instructions I have given you will amount to nothing if you don't pay attention to this last word. If you don't pay attention to this last word, every other thing I have said will be nothing 
finally be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Who? Come on, say finally. finally. That is to say that every other thing I've told you is important. But every other thing I've said to you hinges on this last statement. Come on, tell a friend. Finally, my life is about to be changed. Tell a friend, finally, I'm about to be healed. Tell a friend, finally, I'm about to be anointed. Tell a friend, finally, I'm about to overcome that challenge. Tell a friend, finally, I'm about to break that addiction. Tell a friend, finally, the battle is ending tonight. Come and say, finally, say, I decree finality to every challenge by the power of the Holy Ghost. And so I'm trusting God between tonight and Sunday that the grace of God will be so thick on your life. Amen. How many believe that? And the Lord bless all the leadership right from Mr. President, I call him my president, and all the leaders at UCC. The Lord bless you for this program. I know that by the time we are finishing this, we will tell ourselves it was worth it. God was amongst us. Amen. Amen. So let's turn our Bibles. I want to read two scriptures quickly. And then attempt to open us up to Certain things that I believe strongly are the basis of the New Testament church. I like to read two scriptures. One of them is your theme. Ephesians 6 and the verse number 10. But I like first to go to that book that epistle of Paul and pick it a little bit before we hit that particular text so let's speak let's see from the verse number 5 look at the instructions Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you will obey Christ. Obey them not, only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do. Whether they are slave or free. And masters, treat your slaves in a same way. Do not threaten them. Since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven. And there is no favoritism with him. Now when you are reading this instruction. What comes to your mind is that Paul is giving the people... Jewels for interpersonal living principles on how to live, how to relate, how to communicate better, how to make somebody feel better in your company. These are very important principles that define our horizontal relationship. The way we live with each other, the way we relate with each other. These are, so what one is expecting that these statements continue. These principles continue. But by the first time, Paul rudely introduces something different. You will see that right after the 
introduction of this particular statement, Paul continues to provide principles in living. So in the best of ten, he said, finally, as if he was just ending everything, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And then in the verse of 11, Paul begins to speak a bit about the armory of God. Put on the full armor of God so that you can you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand, stand firm, then with the belt of truth, buckle around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flame, all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And none of us getting and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the lost people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak words may be given so that I may fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And then you will see that from the verse 21, he began just giving greetings out. Now when you read the entire chapter of Ephesians 6, arguably, you can divide the text into two major segments. The first section, right from the verse number one in Ephesians chapter 6 and I'd like to just point to you this quickly as I do the next few analysis it begins with children it begins with a home it begins with relationship it begins with interpersonal relationship right from children obeying their parents and then he continues to slaves and then he continues to masters then Paul rudely as I said cut in and introduces another section. You will see that the text is managing two dimensions of our lives. Number one, it is managing our sociality, our social life, our, our, our lives as we relate to others, our lives as we relate to our parents, our friends, our masters, our rulers, our leaders, as we live in a nation, the life we want to live and honor. But by the verse number 10 through until he gets to the final greetings, which is right from the verse 21 through to verse 24. Before he gets to the verse 21, from the verse number 10 and to the verse number 20, Paul is dealing with something that lies beyond human sociality. Paul is introducing us to the rest of the spirituals. Come on, say the realms of the spirit. One more time. For the last time. Last time. Paul is saying that I'm addressing two things here. I'm addressing the importance of living with your friends. But most importantly, I'm introducing you not only to your horizontal relationships, let me also introduce you to your vertical relationship. Let me link you up to the realms of the spirit. Let me link you up to the realms of something that is so important in your life. And that is the realm of the spirit. And he begins the analysis by telling you that, hey, what I'm about to talk about is so scary. It may be fearful. It may be something of, that may be frightening. But first, I want you to know that it is given unto you to be empowered and strengthened in the Lord. Come on, say it's given unto me. To be strengthened 
I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Say, it's given unto me to be strengthened and enlightened way that be strong in the Lord. That word be strengthened in the Lord or be strong in the Lord is a very interesting Greek word. And the namo, and do namo means that be endued. It means that be clothed. It means that be strengthened. It means that be empowered. Now, so Paul is about to introduce the believer unto something that is so, so important. And that is the works of the devil as against the armory of the believer. Now, let me introduce you something after addressing all the most important social issues in life. Let me just walk you into the realms of the spirit and introduce you to the powers that are available for you in God. So he says, finally be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then Paul introduces them next to their weapons. And then next to the devil or to the works. What their weapons will do to the forces of evil. So he addresses all this and then he ends with the greeting. Let me submit you tonight by first indicating that they can never be so called children of God without power. And they can never be a church without supernaturality the realms of the supernatural and the legal authority given to us as children of God qualifies us to meddle in the realms of the spirit legally without any fear tell a friend I can go into the realms of the spirit legally without any fear One more time. So Paul says, be strengthening God. Come on, say, be strengthening God. Because any experience in God requires supernatural strength. It requires supernatural power. It requires supernatural ability. So Paul says, be strong in the Lord. Increase in strength. Increase in power. Be endued with power. And I just want to just alert you that the New Testament begins to talk about this particular word and do no more more than six or seven other times. Paul and others talk about and do no more. The important point is that God wants us to be empowered. Tell a friend, God wants us to be empowered. One more time. And tonight I will show you the practicality of empowerment in the kingdom. Many of you think that this thing that we call Christianity is just a bunch of theories. The Bible says what we know, what we have heard, what we have handled with our hands is what we testify and our testimony is true. So this thing is not theories. This thing is not a fable. This thing is not a fiction. This thing is a reality. Tell a friend, this is a reality. I can't hear you. Say, tell a friend, I said, tell a friend, this is a reality. One more time, say, this is a reality. And do no more. Tell a friend, I want to be endued with power. Say it. Say, I want to receive supernatural power. When the Bible was speaking in Acts 9 and the verse 22, and it says that Paul increased in strength more and more when Paul was 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 pursuing and ravaging the church, and he says that but Saul increased the more in strength. He increased the more in strength, that particular strength that increased was satanic increase in strength, and yet in the same way and do no more. That Paul received power. He received satanic inspiration. And the Bible said, and he confounded the Jews. So that was the chapter number nine, rather. So when Paul had, 
what was born again in, in chapter 8 Paul was making the mess of the church rather and in chapter 9 when he had met God in on the way to Damascus and had received supernatural power from God rather the Bible said that Paul confounded the Jews because he began increasing come on say increasing and it's the same word and do no more he was increasing in strength from one degree of power onto the other degree of power from one grace onto the other Paul was increasing in strength and I know this week someone is going to increase in strength you are increasing in knowledge and power anointing strength supernatural grace Paul was increasing come on say and do no more the same word is used in Romans 4 20 the Bible said that Paul was talking about the fight of Abraham and he said in verse 20 that Abraham staked not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God is the same word and the more that Abraham although received the promise which delayed yet Abraham did not stake up he did not wonder he was not unstable in faith rather he was endunamoid he increased in faith and i know this week some faith is coming alive alive tell a friend my faith is coming alive that's what my friend is coming alive i can't hear say tell a friend i say tell a friend hit the friend Touch the friend on the shoulder and tell the friend my friend is coming alive. <laughs> Was endunamoid. He received an increase. Come on, say increase. increase. Anybody who tells you that God wants to subtract your increase in grace in your life is a liar. God always wants to add and tonight he's adding unto your life. I said he's adding unto your life. Abraham increased. The same word and the more is used in Philippians 4.13. When Paul was speaking and says, I can do all. I can't hear you. I can do all. Because I'm educated. I can do all things. Because I am smart. I can do all things because my family is a rich family. I can do all things because I have the skills. I can do all things because I have the connection. Ah! I can do all things because I have that scholarship. I can do all things because I am intelligent. I can do all things because I am into the mode. Now somebody receive the power right now. In 2013, I traveled. I was in a conference to Norway. Listen carefully. Tell somebody power. power. Yeah. Power. You don't say. Power. Yeah. I said, say power. Say power. Make a 
Where are the guys? Please, please sit here. Sit here to watch. Just, just make sure you stay here. That was one of the moments I saw that it is the will of God that we taste power. And we don't taste occultic powers. We don't take marine powers. We don't taste powers under the earth. Grosh, apa, loose day. We taste power from on high. Tell a friend from on high. From the throne room. I'm taking a, a, a speed train to the airport. Boarding my flight to Ghana. I go to the place and check in there. Suddenly I saw that I have been misdirected and checked in by some unknown personality. Instead of coming to Ghana, I am checked in to fly from Oslo to Iceland. So I told the lady that I put a miss up here. This is my name. I'm going to Ghana. And I can see that somebody has checked me on onto a flight that is heading towards Iceland. I don't live in Iceland. In fact, I don't like ice. I'm going to Ghana. Gokus. My mother said Gokus. The lady looked at me and said, Sir, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. I ask her, did you understand English? <laughs> because I, I simply can't understand when I'm showing you my ticket that says, simply says that this gentleman is heading towards Ghana and somebody, I don't know who checked me in or liar. What did they say? So it's a matter of just calling Caleb and say, there's a problem here. Wait. The lady said, no. I went, called KLM in Holland, talked to them, they said no. I came to the airport authorities, I told them, I am heading towards Ghana, they said no. If no amount of human explanation can alter their understanding and know what I was talking, I will switch. Do you understand that? Tell a friend, I will switch. How many of you are switching this week? Tell somebody, I have to switch. My fire, my fire. I went back to a woman. Who was in a cubic? I said, Madam, can you try to understand this? <laughs> I said, I can't understand. She said, What is it? I explained everything. I, I, and, I, and I said, she, she would speak really good English. Then I said, Do you understand now? He said, Yes, sir, I understand. But you know, I'm sorry, I can't do anything. So I said, Okay, Madam, now look at me. You want me to just get on board this flight, go to Iceland. What am I going there for? <laughs> I have no family from there. I don't have, I don't even know the place and I don't want to be there. <laughs> Why? I don't, I don't want to be there. They said, I, I can help. Then before I could say Jack, she called on the airport security officers. There is a guy here who is not behaving well. <laughs> Suddenly the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart. And the word was so straight. The word was take charge. Tell a friend, take charge. I can hear, I say, tell a friend, take charge. I take charge. So I saw the police officers walking with all their hefty muscles.
muscles and biceps and triceps and, and, and they had all the things around your waist with some 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 bulldogs and, and they were coming and coming. So I just then took a step and I stood there and I also stretched. <laughs> Suddenly a tongue came out of my mouth, Russia. Barus Oketele. When they got to me, they were mellowed. They say, yes, sir. I say, are you the police officers? They say, yeah. I say, what are you coming to do here? And we are told that you're not behaving well. I say, right, do you understand English? They say, yes. I say, okay, look at this. What do you see on this ticket? They say, I can see that you are from Oslo, and then you are going to Amsterdam, and then from Amsterdam, you're going to Ghana. I say, perfect, you're intelligent. Now, check what you see on this boarding pass. He said, I can see that you have Oslo and you are somebody, you have checked in, you are going to Iceland. Iceland? That's all right. Now, pick my passport. What do you see in it? What's my nationality? He said, Ghanaian, okay. Look at my entire ticket. Do you see Iceland? He said, no. I said, how did you understand? You understand everything? He said, yeah, I understand. I said, right. I'm trying to explain this to your colleagues. They don't understand. So the guy looked at me again, and then he looked at his colleague. And then he said, ah, why? <laughs> then they began talking. Suddenly, when he turned to me, his mind has changed again. He said, well, say, so I said, listen to me. Under the authority of the Spirit, he let your mind open and open. And then he stood and said, Go there, knock the door, change my name, place me on board. I'm living here to Amsterdam, I'm from Amsterdam to Ghana. To Ghana. Go, do it now, now. And the West were coming out. So all, I just saw they look at each other, then, turn, 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 turn. release. A word has come forth. They began responding. They began responding. Suddenly, my name was called. They said I should go in and mother flight. Now, look at this. That is it. That was when I saw that the devil was stopping me. I had a program in Ghana the next day. I must be blocked from not getting in. What happened at that program, I knew that this was not accidental. Power passes power. Weakness. But as 
soon as the person is in the mood, the person's state changes. So when you are until you are enabled, until you are strengthened, until you are empowered, until you are endued with vigor, until you are infused with power, you are in a place of weakness. It can be a weakness of all sorts. But as soon as you are endued the more to go, you, you are strengthened, your state changes, you move to the next step. Come and say, my state changes. So any man who wants strength, or who says, I want strength, or I want to be strengthened, it presupposes that the person is in a place of weakness. Is that right? Is that right? I want to be strengthened means that you are in a place of what? Weakness. And when you are strengthened, your state changes. And tonight, there is going to be a change of state. I can't hear. I said there could be a change of state. Come on, say a change of state. One more time, say a change of state. When people are weak, they know that they don't have strength. Even in the scriptures, fear of a strong man was a problem for the Jews. In Numbers the chapter 13, when the spies were sent onto the land to go and spy, they came back and said, Moses, la la la. The land we went to spy divorced its inhabitants. We saw the giant on the law. In fact, not to exaggerate, we saw ourselves in the eyes and in our own eyes that we were grasshoppers. <laughs> Sir, make no mistake. Don't hand us over as grasshoppers to be eaten in the morning by these giants. And so the Bible said in Numbers 13 and the verse 28, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And in the verse 31, they continue. The Bible said, But the man that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they continued in the verse 33. And there we saw the giant. Come on, say the giant. I can't hear. Say the giant. We saw the giant. The sons of Adam. Which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. How did you know? Caleb in the verse 30 cut in, and the Bible said, and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once. And possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. So a strong man perspective has always challenged weaklings. When people have thought others are stronger than them, they have been afraid. But it is the will of God that we are empowered by God. And so several in the Bible. God talks about the importance of being strengthened. In fact, four, almost five times in the book of Joshua, in the verse 1 alone, right from Deuteronomy 31, when Moses was talking to the people about Joshua, and Joshua himself, he told Joshua, be strong and courageous. And then in the chapter 1 of Joshua, four times, Four times God Himself told you.
Joshua. Be strong. Tell a friend, be strong. I can hear. Tell a friend, be strong. Lara Shagabaha. I say, tell a friend, be strong. Oh, I hear. Tell a friend, be strong. In Joshua 1 says, be strong and courageous. In Joshua 1 7, be strong and very courageous. In Joshua 1 9, be strong and a good and of a good courage. In Joshua 1 18, be strong and of good courage. And in Deuteronomy 31 6 and 7 and 23, Moses told Joshua, be strong and of good courage. In fact, this particular refrain or statement stayed with Joshua. Joshua was not a to be, to be asked by God that be strong and courageous. He stayed with him for a long time that even in Joshua chapter 10 and the verse 25, when Joshua was talking to the Israelis, five kings had banded together to fight them. And the men were afraid. Then Joshua told them in Joshua 10 and the verse 25, be strong and of good courage. The same thing he was told by Moses and God, he also transferred, he also repeated it to the people, be strong and of good courage. So that is just to convince you and let you know that it is the will of God that you receive strength. Come on, say, I receive strength. One more time, say, I receive strength. I can't hear, say, I receive strength. But the question tonight is simple. Where is the source of our strength? How does the believer receive strength? Who is the author of the believer's strength? The answer is straightforward. It's not contentious. The answer for the believer and the answer for this question for the believer is simple. That the source of power for the believer and the source of strength for the believer is the Holy Ghost. Tell a friend, is the Holy Ghost. Say my strength is the Holy Ghost. One more time. And this week, it's a Holy Ghost time. Tell a friend, it's a Holy Ghost time. Ah, I can hear, I can hear, I can hear, I can hear. Allah, brother, shaka, bada, taka, bos, kebron, de, lebre, de. Do I have witnesses? Do I have witnesses? If I have witnesses, can I hear your voice? La, brother, taraba, do, brea, da, bakada. Ala, brea, taba, bron, de, ski, brando, ne, prati, ski, de, le, bosh, ki, bran, ni, hiya, naka, bahaya. Magala, bran, da, bos, brata, bri, terebes. Ordinary persons are beginning to meddle in the realms of the spirit.
I'm an intellectual. I am an intellectual. I know what it means to research and to study. And by the grace of God, I have done quite some fantastic research. And I keep on doing it. By the grace of God, I have begun exploring two levels of humanity and human experience. The realm of science, intellectualism, realism, evidence, seeing is believing. And then, let me add that, logic and philosophy. Then there is another realm. It is not very logical. It operates on faith. You don't see with your eye. It is another realm. One day I was walking in the corridors of my house and I entered my study room. Suddenly I saw somebody just pass right in the corridor. This was around 2 a.m. I'd woken up to just study. I thought maybe I didn't see anything. So I entered the study room. And whilst I was immersing myself in my books, I saw a personality passing again. Still I I thought maybe I need to sleep. But the third time, the person passed. This time around, the person didn't pass that fast. So I could see a personality moving. And that personality is not a member in my household. <laughs> there is a foreign, strange, alien. So I got up from my study room and I went and stood in the corridor. I looked here, I looked, I couldn't find anything. Suddenly, I got a check in my spirit. A strange being has entered your house and I could sense it coming from the main door. I turned to the door and I decreed, I am the Adam of my house. <laughs> Every stranger that is not allowed here is a gate crusher. I disallow you entry. Suddenly, as if there was a whirlwind at the main gate within the house, and disappeared. I said, Nonsense. I take charge. Listen carefully. When Jesus was about to go, he told the disciples, I won't leave you as orphans. The disciples were about to experience what I call separation anxiety. What do you expect? The man gave them food. Even when they were far away on the wilderness and the multitude was with them, and they came to the master and said, send them away. He said, no. What do you have? Five loaves, two fish. He said, bring it. If a man can break five loaves and two fish, an excess of 12 baskets, presumably one for each disciple. Take it home. And a joy that even when they had to pay a tax, he will tell them some stupid politician push some money somewhere, a fish swallow it, go and get the hook, pick that fish, take the money, go and pay your tax, bro. How sweet! He was their insurance. When they were on the waters and the storms were rising high, the man was busily sleeping and they said, Master, 
us no bar that we perish. Bro, the man gets up, stands at the tip of the boat, and speaks to the wind. And the Bible says suddenly there was a great calm. Peter said, what, what kind of man are you? Oh God. <laughs> One day, John disciples came and the other religious, religious leaders said, Jesus, why are your disciples eating too much? They were feeding them too much. The guys were really doing supernatural engagement to the extent that Peter, John and James when they were with him on the Mount of Old Transfiguration they saw Moses, they saw Elijah ah, what a man what a man they saw the dead rise back to life the lepros cleansed the blind see, the lame walking, demons cast out. One day he called them unto himself, and the Bible said he gave them power against unclean spirits. Oh. You come to him and he touches you. Go, 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 and he extended that to the seventy-two, and the Bible said they returned with testimonies. God. That guy was solid. Solid. When you brought the disciples' problems and they couldn't address, all they had to tell you was, I'm saying, <laughs> wait a little bit. Just wait. Master is not here. <laughs> a typical example was when they brought that young woman, young lady, and they couldn't, was it, I said, boy, or so, they couldn't cast the demon. And when Jesus came, the man brought the child and said, Sir, I brought, them, I brought my child here. They couldn't do anything. The Bible said, Jesus looked at him. Suddenly, the demon left the boy. And then Peter said, Sir, how do you do this? He said, This kind go and not accept my prayer, my fasting. Wow. There was a time he was passing. And then two blind men wanted to touch his head. And he said, Pastor, hey, hey. You don't touch me like that. You have to go through as protocol. You have to respect protocol. But Timios has been sitting by the road begging for food all the time. One day he heard a sound. And then they said, he said, what is happening? They said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. But Timia said, whether they kill me today or not, I must see this man myself. Yeah. Jesus, son of David, have mercy, Jesus. Peter was say, hey, blind man, shut up. <laughs> but the Bible said he cried the more. The woman who had played for 12 years said, if I could touch the hell. Of his government. Suddenly, bro, Jesus appears to these guys and he tells them, I am about to go. Go away. What are you talking about? Say, so, what are you going to do? So the Bible said in John 10 and 2 to the 11, when he was about to go to Jerusalem, he said, Lazarus is sleeping. Let's go and wake him up. Say, ah, Lazarus. Nature has simply arranged. There is a simple short circuit in our brain. When you sleep, you wake up. Do we have to walk all these distance and wake somebody up? <laughs> but he was heading also to Jerusalem and they didn't want him to go. Because he'll be killed. He told them when I go, I'll be killed. Then he said, It is expedient for me to go. And when I go, the Holy Ghost will come. Jesus announces an exchange. And tonight, after Sunday, that exchange.
exchange will work in your life. Amen. Come and say an exchange. An exchange. I can you say an exchange? An exchange. How many of you want to supernaturally test again the Holy Ghost? Yes, it can 